If you do want to build structures, uh, it is possible, but there are some things to keep in mind. Firstly, waste is a horrible material to build on. Um, just in terms of bearing capacity, it's about 10 times lower than clean sand or gravel. So you really need to be careful about spreading out the loads of your structure on the soil um, because the waste just won't be able to stand up to it the way traditional construction materials do. Um, some ways of doing this are adding a, a thicker cover of engineered fill on top of the waste, so that helps distribute some of those loads and gives you more stable foundation to build on. Uh, you can inject grout into the waste to help stabilize it and add some of that bearing capacity. Um, or you can choose areas of the landfill that may have uh, less settlement happening in the waste. So uh, common materials would be like incinerator ash, which is very stable, or construction demolition waste, which is really just, you know, mostly pieces of concrete and things like that. Those would be easier to build on than just your um, standard uh, municipal solid waste with a lot of organics, a lot of paper and stuff like that. That's really going to move a lot over time as it degrades. Another thing that you can do is use piles, um, which can go down into the waste or even all the way through the waste to whatever foundation um, is underneath the waste. Uh, this it would not be a good idea to do with a line landfill because you'd be punching holes in it, but many sites that are being redeveloped are um, old enough that they would not have been lined at that time. So that's an option you can use. That's shown in the picture here. And you may also, on any structure, want to include some type of system for sub-slab depressurization. So any gas that's collecting below your structure, you're going to give it a way to get out uh, rather than go into your building through any fractures or things like that. So uh, in the picture here on the left, there's an example of a building here. It's got this gas collection system venting out on either side. Um, that's, that's one way to do it. Or in the one on piles, it just has a natural space where the air would blow out um, any gas that is coming up through. The one on the left is also shown as cracked in half, so that hasn't had uh, a strong enough foundation to account uh, for the weight of the building, whereas the one on the right on the piles is rooted in a competent foundation which supports it. For uh, an example of a site that was redeveloped um, with attention to these geotechnical parameters is uh, the Disco Road Organics Processing Facility in Toronto. So this is one of City of Toronto's two anaerobic digesters. And this is actually the footprint of the um, organics processing facility is right on top of an old landfill. So they removed um, the above grade portion of the waste, um, but then there's still some waste buried underneath it. So to be able to do that, they sunk in uh, over 13 kilometers worth of piles. And in the picture here, you can see, you know, these piles have been drilled already. These ones are kind of part way in. So the whole thing is sitting on these piles, um, which are gonna be able to give it a foundation that it wouldn't be able to get from building on grade on the waste itself. And this building also has a gas barrier underneath the foundation to prevent that migration up into the building and a venting system to give that gas another way out to prevent uh, the people in the building from being exposed to the landfill gas. And uh, where McLennan Park and Fresh Kills Park were examples of some of those kind of recreational redevelopment purposes of site, um, this is an example of an industrial redevelopment purpose. So it's in a, an area that's high value, it's close to the city, um, it's next door to some other waste infrastructure so it really made sense to site it there and it was worth the price of doing this extra geotechnical work to reclaim the land and do something positive with it. <laughs>